Welcome to this month's message. My name is Joyner Briseño. Thank you for tuning in. This month's message is called Dead to the Law. Dead to the Law. Now let's talk about marriage. Marriage. There is no other union in this world other than marriage that depicts the beautiful union between the believer in Christ and our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, marriage is a sacred covenant between a man and a woman only, which can only be broken by death. Now, with this in mind, let's go to our first verse. Amen? And it's over at Romans chapter 7, verses 2 through 3. Verse 2 says, For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law that binds her to him. Now, in that verse, I would like you to underline, she is released from the law. Yes, let's continue. She is released from the law that binds her to him. Verse 3, so that if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, she is called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law. Again, underlined, she is released from that law and is not an adulteress if she marries another man. Now, by the death of your spouse, we are legally disjointed from the sacred covenant of marriage. Now, in the context of Paul is not just talking about marriage. He is actually taking us to a place where he will reveal something a little deeper, which we will definitely look at. Yes? Now, keep it in mind that by the death of your spouse, we are legally disjointed from, the, uh, from God's covenant of marriage. Keeping that in mind, did you know that God's people have been legally disjointed from the law which was the foundation of the old covenant of law? Once upon a time, God's people were married to the law during the old covenant. Yes, and we can see that in the Old Testament. Amen? But everything changed when Jesus came into this world. Amen? Now, does that mean that Jesus came to campaign a divorce? Came to uh, campaign a separation between God's people from the law? Does that mean that Jesus came to campaign an adulterous relationship with grace whilst, while still being married to the law? God forbid. God forbid. When I say that God's people are no longer married to the law, know that there was a legal foundation when God gave a better covenant with better promises. Yes? But what could have possibly happened that the law is no longer for you and I today? Let's take a look at the next verse. Yes? Romans chapter 7. And this time is verse 4. And it says, So, my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ. Now, when we received Jesus as Lord and Savior, we identified ourselves as dead in Christ. 
And because we have died with Christ, we have also died to the law. Remember when I said to underline those uh, two sentences in the past two verses that stated that through the death of her spouse, she is released from the law? Well, through the death of Jesus Christ, we have been released from the law. Amen? We have been released from the law, the old covenant of law. In other words, the law of Moses is no longer applicable to us for righteousness, to obtain righteousness in the eyes of God. Not only that, but as Gentile believers or non-Jewish believers, we have been excluded from the law from the get-go. The law was never given to the Gentile. So, we were never married to the law in the first place. The law was only given to the Jew. Yes? That's not to say that we should reject the Old Testament as God's Word. God forbid. God forbid. The Old Testament is certainly God's inspired Word, but now we must interpret it via the cross, via the finished work of Jesus. Amen? Now, you might be asking, Joyner, Jesus himself said that he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. My friend, that is right. Jesus went to the cross that he might fulfill the law. And guess what? He succeeded masterfully. Jesus fulfilled the demands of the law as us. And because the demands of the law have been fulfilled as us, we have been released from the law that binds righteously. Amen. The law has vanished away via a righteous foundation. For example, let's say you have an unpaid invoice and you make a payment, a full complete payment towards that invoice. Would you say that the invoice has been met? Certainly. The invoice has been fully met. And what do you do with a paid invoice? You file it away. Amen? You file it away just in case the creditors come back saying that you did not pay the invoice. You can show them the receipt of a paid invoice. Amen? The same thing with our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus went to the cross, fully met the law, as us, amen, the law has been fully met, therefore releasing us from the law via the death of Christ. Yes, Jesus took out the very thing that caused a separation between Him and us, amen, between God and and his people because as long as the law was in effect it always created a separation because God is holy and we were tainted with sin it always disqualified us from approaching God not only that but the law hindered God from approaching us, hindered God in all His love towards us. The law hindered Him from fully approaching us as we are. Yes? Now, let's take a look at the next verse in Romans. Amen? Romans 
7, 6 says, But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. Amen? Now, God's people have been delivered from the first spouse, the law, 2,000 years ago. And as long as God's people were married to the law, it always recalled our sins to our memory. It always showed us what we were doing wrong and what we supposed to be doing right. It always brought uh, it always discouraged us and brought fear into our lives. It always pointed to us and made us sin conscience. Yes? It always brought hardcore truth without compassion. It never lifted us, but it always pointed the finger. And no matter how hard we tried, no matter how hard uh, we labored to please that spouse, we never measured up. Our love could never measure up to that standard. We could never please that other spouse because we, something was always wrong. Something was always up with us. Yes? And that was a big drag. What a drag to be around somebody who always points to our mistakes, to always bring us down, to always bring discouragement, and never being able to meet that standard. What a drag. Now, let's take a look at the next verse. Amen? And it says in Romans chapter 7, verse 4, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we are now married to another, which is Jesus which is grace. Amen? He came to show us an unconditional love even in our wrongdoings, our wrong thinkings, our wrong sayings. He came to show us a, a hope and a steadfast confidence that He will never leave us, nor forsake us when we fail. He came to lift up our souls with encouragement, with hope, with love and grace and compassion, to still love us even in our undeserved state. Amen? And not only that, but Jesus and the believer in Christ are now one. They were made one. Just as in the covenant of marriage between the husband and the wife are made one. Isn't that beautiful? Let's take a look at the next verse. Amen? Colossians 2.14 Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Notice that it says that it, the law has been wiped out, that handwriting of requirement. Amen? The law was created by the handwriting of God. Amen? God Himself, with His finger, wrote the Ten Commandments. And it's saying that the law has been nailed 
to the cross. Now my advice is keep it nailed. Keep it nailed. Don't bring the haunting memories of the first or the former covenant to the new. Amen? Don't bring the haunting memories of, your, of the first marriage into the second one. Amen? Know that we have been legally disjointed from the law because Jesus himself took the law and died. Amen? And now, once we are raised with Christ, we are now married to Jesus. We are now married to grace. Amen? If you've never received this Jesus, then please say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your Son, Jesus. He took all my sins at the cross, and He forever died with all my sins. And today He is risen and sitting at the right hand of God as my righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you are my Lord and my Savior. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. And until next time.